three minutes. It's open eight months of the year, but workers at Potawatomi Zoo say their safety efforts are a full-time job. That's right. Those grounds date back more than a century. WSBT 22 fact finder Hillary Powell has been looking into what it takes to keep things up to today's standards. That's right. Originally called the South Bend Zoo, Potawatomi Zoo celebrates its 115th anniversary this spring. Zoo officials released a master plan in 2015 that acknowledged structural shortcomings. I went beyond the gate to see what steps are being taken to keep Indiana's oldest zoo safe. Each day, eyes are on the prowl at Potawatomi Zoo, but not the eyes you may be expecting. We want to make sure that we're not having to lock animals inside because we don't have any other options. Executive Director Marcy Dean is on the hunt for the sites that 200,000 visitors don't see shortcomings from just being in South Bend for a long time. We've been around since 1902. I'll just put it out there um, that all of our large cat exhibits, we need new large cat exhibits. Dean says decades old buildings can't always keep up with growth. Hi mama. Like here, where critically endangered leopards call the zoo's oldest structure home. So it's in the 80s. Yeah. So it is, you can tell. It's showing its it's showing its age. Amur leopard cubs are stuck inside because the zoo doesn't have enough room to let them roam outside, separate from larger male cats. It's one of dozens of needed improvements listed in the zoo's 2015 master plan. It's still just a vision on paper, estimated to cost $37 million. Among the concerns, one exhibit yard sits empty while others need more space. The tiger exhibit needs a complete renovation, and the lion exhibit is undersized. How could this be improved? This could be improved with new holding building and more natural habitat as well. Now this is one of our better outside cat exhibits, but you see the same thing, so chains and bars. Dean says annual Department of Agriculture inspections show no recent non-compliant issues. For the past 25 years, the zoo has also been accredited by the Association of Zoos and Aquariums, something that less than 10% of the nation's zoos can say. Potawatomi is up for AZA inspection in 2019. The welfare of the animals is being factored a lot more into exhibit design today, and um, those considerations are now very much part of the planning process. It's great that it's part of their master plan. Um, they're recognizing it. They're being open and honest about the need to, to make the changes. Dean says it's a challenge to keep up with new regulations released every year. 2017 AZA accreditation standards say all animal enclosures must be of a size sufficient to provide for the animal's physical and psychological well-being. Dean describes the big cat exhibits as outdated, but says their master plan hopes to find public and private funding for upgrades. So your better tiger exhibits have more of the natural components. They have more of the greenery, they have bigger inside holdings. There's one of those buildings that needs to be looked at. It has infrastructure issues. It could potentially be an accreditation issue for us down the road. We need a new tiger building. As part of the zoo's master plan, they're also considering guest experience. They're taking a look at the slope of this entrance. It's not ADA compliant. They want to smooth it out so more guests can have a better experience. Dean says they're moving in the right direction. The zoo is set to fill the empty exhibit with the state's only a copy. There's also more attention to animal well-being. We're now doing free choice in our access, like I said, when it's temperature appropriate, with several of our animals here. And I oftentimes hear the neighbors saying, I heard lions out in the middle of the night last night, because they're given the choice to go outside, which is so much better for them. Always looking at the zoo from the view of the eyes that never leave. So you walk as with their eyes in mind. We want to take care of the jewel in the community that we've been, you know, given. And Rick and Jennifer, in addition to AZA inspections, Dean tells me the USDA conducts pop-up inspections so they could really appear at any time. Wow, that's, I mean, it's important to be able to see that. You talk about them being accredited. They're not guaranteed reaccreditation. That's right. They are not. In fact, they have to reapply every five years, and this is a lengthy process. It takes about eight months, and some requirements are stronger than the federal rules, 
and Dean says they'll be doing a summer campaign to actually start to raise funds for some of those improvements. Those funds so vital to have, that's for sure. Hillary, thank you.